For this lesson we're going to be taking a look at the distances between various geometric constructs that we have been dealing with so far in this unit. The emphasis of course is to make use of the different forms and properties that we've looked at. So for example, the distance from a point to a line in R2. So if I have a, if I have a straight line and I have a point the distance from that point to that line is going to be along this perpendicular line. So we're going to be interested in that distance from there to there. That is the shortest distance. So essentially what we're talking about is the distance between those two points. Now in the grade 10 course we actually cover this idea. We, we come up with a formula for the distance or not the formula, but a process, an algorithm for finding the distance between a point and a line. I'm not going to go through the derivation of this, but in this case, this different formula that I'm giving you, it's not the same one as the one that you would have come up with before, because this one makes use of the Cartesian equation of the line, and it's, the derivation of this comes from the dot product and the idea of this being a right angle. And that derivation is in your book. You can take a look at that for interest, but you won't be asked to derive that. You are going to be asked to know which formula to use here and how to use it. Now R2 is not terribly interesting to us. Far more interesting is R3. So the first example in R3 that we're going to look at is the distance from a point to a line in R3. Now you would think you'd end up with something very similar to what we looked at before, but because there's no Cartesian equation for a line in R3, we have to make some reference to the vector equation instead. And it turns out that when we work through the derivation of that one, what we end up with is this rather awkward looking formula. M is the direction vector of the line that we were given, and QP or PQ that is the vector from the point that we were specified, so the point that we were given, and Q is any point on the line. So a good choice for Q is going to be the position vector. Technically you could plug in any value for T that you wanted to, so you could find a value for Q that was any, any value, but if we're using the vector equation of a line, uh, then we know the initial position vector. It's important here also when you take your cross product, you're taking the absolute value. So remember that cross product is going to give you a vector and then you have to find the magnitude of that vector in the same way that you're finding the magnitude of the direction vector in the denominator. What about the case where we have the distance from a point to a plane? Now, when we talk about, and I didn't draw the diagram for this, but when we talk about the distance from a point to a line, just as we did in R2, the distance we're interested in is the perpendicular distance. So if I have a plane, then the distance from a point to a plane is going to be that line or that distance that is the perpendicular distance to the plane. Whenever we're talking about shortest distances, we're always talking about perpendiculars. So that would be perpendicular to the plane at that point. For, doing, for using this formula, we're going to need to have our plane defined by the Cartesian equation. If your plane is defined by parametric or vector equations, you're going to have to make the conversion from the vector equation or the parametric equation to the Cartesian equation. And that's something we've covered in a previous lesson. But provided you know the coordinates of the point that you're interested in, and that you have the equation of the plane in Cartesian form, you actually end up with a formula that's very similar to what we had for the distance between a point and a line in R2. The difference being in R3, the Cartesian equation describes a plane as opposed to a line. Now, I want to talk about some special cases or some other cases that don't have a ready formula to use, but we can actually get to one of those three original formulas.
So for example, what if we have two parallel lines? In the case of two parallel lines, whether it's an R2 or R3, the procedure is the same, it's just the formula we use will be different. The first thing we're going to do is find a point on one of those lines using the equation. If you've been given two parallel lines, presumably you have at least one of the equations of those lines. You should have both. So you can just make a substitution and find one of the points on one of the lines. But now you have the distance essentially between a point and another line and you have a formula for that, whether it's R2 or R3. If we have the distance between two planes, it's a very similar procedure. So in case four, I have two parallel lines. I find any point on the first line and now I can find the perpendicular distance to the second line if that's line one and that's line two. Now this fifth case can only occur in R3 because we're dealing with planes. So the distance between two planes, and I didn't say this, but they must be parallel planes because it wouldn't make sense for them to be anything other than parallel. If they're not parallel planes, they're actually going to intersect and so the distance will be zero. But between two parallel planes, so the way we do that is we find a point on one of the planes using an equation and then we make sure we have the Cartesian form for the second plane And now I can find the distance between this point and this plane. And that distance is going to be a perpendicular distance. But we have the formula that already finds that perpendicular distance for us. And then the last case, the most difficult one, is what happens if we have a couple of skew lines? So these are not parallel lines. And this is really difficult to represent in a diagram form on a flat surface like this. So there's one of the lines and then there's the other line and you have to imagine this in R3 and so this line can actually pass over top of this line without it actually touching. So it's not as if they're going to suddenly intersect. This line is passing underneath the first line. So I've got some steps laid out here and I'm going to go through these. Actually I go through this in more detail. So the idea is we're going to use the direction vectors of these two lines and we're going to create planes for each of the lines. We're going to find a point on one of the planes and then we're going to find the distance between the point and the plane. But let me show you that in a little bit more detail with a couple of extra steps to outline things. So here we are again, two skew lines in R3 and you have to really use your imagination to visualize. These are not in R2, so they're not just going to meet somewhere over here. This, these two form two lines that will never touch. So the first thing we do is we identify direction vectors for each of the lines. In general, that's going to be given to you. You're going to be given the vector or the Carte not Cartesian, the vector or the parametric or the symmetric equations for each line. So you can determine the direction vectors for each line. And this is where things get a little unusual. The first thing you're going to do is actually take the direction vector from the second line and you're going to combine it with the direction vector of the first line and your initial position vector and you're going to make a plane from that. So that gives me this first plane which I've got as a light blue. And you can see that that first plane contains two lines, the, the original line and it contains a second line that's parallel to this second line. We repeat that process except for now I'm going to take the first direction vector, combine it with the second direction vector and the second position vector and I'm going to use that to form a plane. Because these two planes are made up of the same spanning set, the two vectors form a spanning set in each case, the only thing that's different is the initial position vector. So these two planes are parallel. So now I have two parallel planes. Well I actually spoke about that earlier. Once we're down to parallel planes, we find a point on one of those planes. 
and if you have the equation of your parallel planes you should just be able to sub in some values for your parameters and you'll find this point or you could actually use your initial position vector that's actually an easier thing to use so use the initial position vector of your first line which will be a, a point on the first plane the other thing you need is you have to have the second plane in Cartesian form and to, to get that Cartesian form the most important parts are going to be your a B and C so to find your a B and C or to find that vector that normal vector remember that the normal vector is going to be perpendicular to the plane and so you can use those two direction vectors that you use to create the plane take the cross product of those vectors that will give you your normal vector and that gives you your a b and c values to go into your Cartesian equation in order to get your d value you're just going to sub in a point and we should know this point which is the initial position vector of the second line so we have everything we need to come up with the Cartesian equation of this red plane well now I have a point and a Cartesian equation and so I can use the distance formula between a point and a line but you might notice from the way I've drawn this well this does not actually line up with either of those lines yes it's here it's at the initial position vector of the first line but it doesn't seem to have anything to do with each of these lines individually it has to do with the plane but it turns out that it actually is equivalent to what we want and so if I take that perpendicular distance between those planes and I just slide it over a little bit it actually lines up with what we want maybe if I go back here and I actually select it now oh, I need to select more than one let's see if I can I probably won't be able to do this let's group that and now if I move that over yeah this will work if I move it along the line up here you can see that eventually if I find the right point you can see it now not only does it still lie on line number one which is that one it now is touching line number two and it's going to be touching that at a right angle so this is now the perpendicular distance between those two lines which by definition is the shortest distance between those lines and that's the distance we want for the assigned work this first group of questions these deal with um, lines and let's see distance between a point and a line in R2 point and a line in R3 and this next section deals with distances between points and planes and the different variations that I outlined in that those special cases